Good morning, friends. I just wanted to introduce my next major crochet project. Any guesses? <laughs> I am going to attempt to make some bumblebees. My mom found a bubble seed at a craft market uh, a couple years ago, I want to say now, and she thought it was super cute. My sister-in-law has been making crocheted bumblebees, and now I want to make some. Tis the season, there's spring, my kids have been seeing them fly around. I'm very excited. I am attempting my own pattern, which is a little bit nerve-wracking nerve for me. And I did start, I made a couple little guys, little template, oh, little ones, jumbo. <laughs> But I ran into a hiccup, which made me not really want to work on them anymore. But so this is my first little mock-ups. I think they're super cute. Um, I think everything is cute. But I noticed that on when I was changing the yarn colors, we were getting this fun action happening here. And normally when I crochet, guys, I'm not doing a stripe, so I do see that. But you know, one little thing, I don't know, that doesn't bother me. But when I'm seeing it like this, that really bugs me. And I was chatting with my other crochet friend about it, Monica, and she was like, oh, just do the invisible stitch. What do you mean the invisible stitch? So she sent me the link and we're gonna try that this morning and see if that helps solve my issue. I mean, look at this jumbo guy. He's so cute and he's gonna be so big once he's stuffed. Like, I love, I love the concept. Just need to get there. And then once I get that body and the stripes sorted out, then I wanna make a ten, 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 I want to make a tennis and I want to make a smile and eyeballs and of course I need to figure out the wings so that is the plan and hopefully the plan is to make a bunch of them for my mom um keep some for me give some away as gifts maybe that is the hope so let's find out if I can do it this morning I think it's really funny. I go to record and I'm automatically holding my yarn and everything is so tight. It's so hard to work. Like I'm nervous because the camera is shining on me. I just thought that was funny. Loosen up, loosen up. Good morning, friends. So I just wanted to quickly show you. It's a brand new day and I'm working on the bumblebees again. But I just wanted to show you, this is my original, just kind of crocheting normally and switching colors how I normally would. And it's creating this kind of zigzag action going, which I don't like. And now I'm working for the invisible stitch here from All From Jade. And look, this is my seam. Look how clean that is. There's a little bit of funniness going on here, but this one is so clean. I love it. So I'm hoping the more I practice, the more I can tidy up my stitches and I'm very excited. This one here is my big jumbo guy. This is my first one too. So he is the original, the original color switching going on there, but I love him too much. He's, he's just like the big, the big daddy. All right. So I'm going to keep working on these and then I need to figure out how to end them, but I'm just very happy that this is tidy. This has been tidied up now.
lovely people. I was watching back some of my clips and realized that I am short a bumblebee. So it is my attempt to make another one this morning. And I thought how fun would it be for me to make one and chat with you guys. Hopefully at the same time. Hopefully I don't stop talking or stop crocheting. Up until now, I'm not entirely sure what I filmed about the bees or what I've talked about. Um, it's been kind of a scattered brain week. So hopefully I don't repeat myself too much or I'll edit it out if I have. But I've decided to make some bumblebees for my mom and a bunch of different sizes. So I'm working on the two largest sizes this week. Kind of call it a jumbo because it's a really large bee and then the medium size. I'm just kind of making a, a number that kind of seems right to me. I made four bit, four jumbo ones and then this will be the sixth medium one. I, it is my hope to work on some smaller ones later, but that won't be this week, that won't be this video. Um, but as I do work on those, I'm sure I'll film them too and insert it in another week. All right. There. Apparently I can't talk and crochet at the same time. Too much, too much to think about. I'm currently making up this pattern as I go along. Um, there's a lot of amazing bee patterns online. I've seen a few free ones, but I kind of wanted to just challenge myself to make something that was just my own, kind of figure it out as I go. I'm learning things, um, but it's been a lot of fun though too. It's been really freeing to just kind of have that, just try and see what happens and rip it back if it doesn't work. I'm kind of just doing this pattern based off of the things that I've already learned. Um, so I'm working the bumblebee body in very similar shapes to where I find a lot of crocheted figurines are. So we have like six crochets, six single crochets in a magic loop, and then you slowly increase until I have 24 stitches in total. And then I work 20, those 24 stitches in one more row, and then I switch to my black color. And one of the problems I was having with my first bumblebee that I made was because I was just switching colors as I normally would in a project, but it created this really wonky line as it always does. Um, but I really noticed it a lot with the yellow and black contrasting colors and it bothered me. So I was talking to my friend about this and she was like, well, why don't you do the invisible stitch? And I, I never heard of the invisible stitch before. So she sent me a video and lo and behold, it's actually from a designer that I love already on Instagram, all from Jade. She did this beautiful invisible stitch for her products and I tried it out and it's awesome. I will go and find both my bumblebees so I can show you the difference it has made. I'm sure you would have seen it in previous clips too, but so there's my, there's my little bumblebee head. Okay, so these are my first bumblebees that I've done. These big gigantic little, this is the Jumbo. But here is where my color switches. So this is me just crocheting normally and then just switching the color and then moving on with black here. So it created this little zigzag. Now normally when I make figurines, it, there is a little line that happens, but I'm not really bothered by it. I don't know, it doesn't bug me with my other guys. But for this, because maybe it's just like a repeating thing, that, that does bug me. So that is why I was like, friend, help. Here's my little guy too. So that's, those are my first bumblebees. Then my friend was like, invisible stitch, all from Jade. And this is what it looks like. Like I know where it is, but I don't know if the average person would know. So that makes me very, very happy. It's just cleaner. It makes me, it, it's just cleaner and I, I love it a lot. So that's the stitch that I'm working on or I have been working on all week. Um, and so I'm about to go do that now, but I'm not filming it because if you want to see how to do that, I will link her video down below so you can watch. All right, so now I'm adding my black yarn. I know. I think this project has been making me very happy because bees equal springtime, dandelions are blooming. I've been slowly putting things out of my garden. It just feels like it's officially warmer weather head spring-like no more snow, that kind of thing. So we're just working on these bees, just has been putting me in a really good mood. I can't wait to get to their wings and see how that looks. 
probably the next step after I finish this bumblebee um, will be the eyes. I think I kind of want to figure out what size to do them. Um, I don't want them to, to be too big. But I will be working the same eye tutorial that I did for my bunnies. I just, I love them so much and I think that that would add some really cute, uh, oh, I just really add a little highlight to their eyes. So I'm gonna do that. And I don't know why I just picked the one stripe, but the one stripe just looked really good to me. I mean, there's lots of patterns where there's two stripes, three stripes. There's even this really cute pattern that had um, the little stinger on the, on the back of the bee. And I contemplated doing that for a moment, but it did look a, a little less cute, a little bit more kind of intimidating, I guess. <laughs> I didn't want that. These bees are friendly bees. So I opted for just a rounded body instead. You can see that again here. I still have to close, close it all off and tighten everything up, but just like a nice rounded egg shape is kind of what I was going for. So, but yeah, definitely look on Instagram, or on Instagram, definitely look around because there's a lot of awesome patterns. Okay, black is on. And do the invisible stitch again. When I first watched the video, I was a little bit like, okay, what is she doing? I mean, she explains it so well. It's just me being like, okay, now I have to relearn, relearn all my moves, but it's very easy. And once I think you, like once I did it a couple of times, I really understood what it was she was trying to accomplish. I really understood the, the stitch. And so now I feel very good about doing it like knowing where to put my hook and things, or even where to put my hook to build up the next row. There's just a really good, I have a really good understanding now of what to do. And I say that and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something silly. All right, adding my yellow again. And this yarn is just worsted weight four. I have, this is my go-to yarn, get it from Michaels. And my hook size is my favorite hook size, size five millimeter. It's when I made the bunnies on, it's why these, these are so jumbo. My friend gave me a 3.75 hook with a beautiful soft handle that I wanted to try for the little bees. Um, I did try for these guys when I first started this week, but I found that I automatically like, hold my hook way up here as opposed to back here. So with the hook having a handle and my fingers being up here, it just felt weird. And I thought, not this week. Like, let's work on the design. Let's work on figuring this out first. And then I'll go and I'll try the new, holding my crochet hook properly, I assume, and a different size. So that's gonna be my future goals with this project. Yeah, I wanna know, are you guys working on anything? Are there any projects that you're excited to get your hands on or that you're currently working on? Or now that it's springtime, you feel like you can, you can work on it? love to know. I'm slowly planting things in the garden. My opa uh, would be furious at me if he heard that. <laughs> he would always say nothing until his birthday, which was around me long. But I've talked to a lot of friends and they've already started planting things. So I feel like if it were to snow, it wouldn't be my fault. <laughs> But it's lovely seeing green things back there in my little garden spot. All right, so now I'm just gonna get the next row of black on. Actually, it's not the next row, it's, it's the end. It's the bum. Okay. And then for the last little bit, I just did again two more rows of the black. So I'm still working those 24 stitches. And then I will decrease to do the rounded end of the body. And that's my little bumpy body. Okay, so I'm just finishing up my second black row before I start the decreases. So now I'll be working everything backwards from how I increase. So I'll be doing two single crochets and then I will be uh, crocheting two together, doing that all the way around. And then it'll be the one single crochet, two together, and then the two together. So. That's how I'll finish these. Actually, maybe I'll stop right now so I can weave in the indies. 
for end weaving, I just like to take my ends and go down one way and up one one and up one way, keeping the yellow with the yellow stripe and the black with the black. There's no greater fear I have than something to fall apart in a kid's hand, so I, I make sure this ends are woven in. One thing I forgot to mention too is that earlier this week, All From Jade posted a little bumblebee tutorial that she made. Um, and she used pink yarn for the little cheek, little blush, which I thought was really cute. Just such different ways to uh, personalize the bees. I don't, I won't be doing the blush. I'm thinking smile. I think these bees need a grin. Um, but I just thought the blush was really, really cute. All right, so now I'm gonna start my decreasing. And with the jumbos, I just decided to go to 30 stitches around. Um, I think that's the only thing different. Yeah, I was just 30 and then the two. My first one had a, ooh, had three rounds of black, um, but I just did to go down to the two for all the other ones, so. That's the difference between the, the jumbo and the medium is just 30 versus 24. And so I can would imagine, actually no, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> I'll let you know what the small ones are when I'm working on the small ones. Then I even had a crazy thought this morning, well, what if I made two different size smaller ones? Like what if this was actually a large? So we had jumbo, large, medium, and then tiny. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, and then I'm down to just my decreases. At this point, I can probably start stuffing. Actually, maybe I should. I've got some cotton over here. Hang on. All right, I call it cotton. It's just polyester fiber. Polyester, it's just polyester. Here, a cloud. Hopefully you saw the majority of this bee being worked on. I didn't realize that my camera was so high. <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay. So then I'm just gonna continue stuffing until it's my, until it's squishy enough. And I just do that by feel. It's just what everything feels to me, feels right. Still have to cinch up the end here, but that is B. I just kind of roll it and kind of make sure that head is filled up, not just the back end. Do a little squish. Oh. That's a little B. Again, look how smooth those lines are. But yay! As I move on with this project and work on more body parts, I'll definitely be filming more, so stay tuned for more cuteness. Good evening everybody. I just wanted to show you that I've been working on the bumblebees today. Um, I tied up all the loose ends so they are completely at this moment yarn free or end free. I crocheted a whole bunch of eyes and that's from Stephanie from Grace and Yarn. Of course I will link her down below. It's the eye pattern I use for the bunnies. So I have all of them here. They still need their thread for their highlight. And I was just kind of playing around here with a wing. Um, I sent pictures to both my friend and my mom just to be like, does this look like a wing yet? 
Um, but I definitely think it's starting to look like a wing. Here, I'll just get some extra. Here we go. Hee hee hee. This is just so exciting. Good morning, friends. I just wanted to show this wing a little closer before I built up some more. I was just showing my girls and they agree that this is a very much a wing shape, so I'm very, very happy about that. I'll be making a stack of these this morning, especially, especially, or I'm ho hopefully these large ones here. So they're gonna go on these large bees. There we go, like that. So there'll be two of them there. And I just wanted to talk about the build up a little bit because I think it's very interesting. It's not something that I've commonly worked with. The idea is you start six stitches in the magic loop, then you, the next row you double up. So two single crochets into the next row. And then on your third row, you just crochet two single crochet, but then you double up. So you increase into three. It's all single, it's all single crochet. So you increase in three, and then you just work three more stitches in the single crochet, and then you increase in another three, and then one single crochet, and that's your third row. And then so I did that another time with my row number four, so getting down to the to the bottom and then increasing in three, and then single crochet, increasing in three, and then I did it one more time where I increased on the top, came back down, and then instead of increasing on the bottom, I actually decreased three. So I kind of cinched it a little bit, and it kind of made this made this now what we're referring to as a wing shape. So yeah, I just thought that was really cool and very interesting and hopefully I can get some video of me actually crocheting it. But who knows, this morning is kind of a wild one, so who knows what happens. <laughs> I just wanted to show that I have all the eyeballs on the bees now. Um, I've taken a few hours this morning to get those on and they're looking so cute. So now I'm trying to figure out what my next step should be, whether I should just get the wings on or if I should move on to the antennas. I just wanted to show that the four jumbos are done with the wings at least. Everything is attached. <laughs> Looking ready to fly. Oh my goodness, I don't know what happened the last few days. I think I kind of just sat and I worked really hard on them in the evenings and they are now officially done. I don't have very many more clips. I mean, everything you would have seen up until now is what I have. Um, so you didn't see me making the antennae. You didn't see me making the smiles, but uh, I think that's mostly just because I tucked my head down and I just, I got really, really into it. So the only thing that I want to say about the smiles is that it's very hard to make just a one smile fit all for the bumblebees. Um, there, I think it's this guy, this little grin. I tried so hard to make a big grin smile on him and it was not working. So he ended up with this little smirk thing going on. Whereas with some of the bigger ones, it was much easier to put 
a wide smile on. And then I made sure everything was tucked in and then I wove in the ends back here so his smile should hopefully stay, stay really well. And then as for the antennae, I chained, I did just a basic crochet chain and uh, that's what it is. And so I had my beginner string here which I just kind of wove in through and then everything is tucked in and uh, super secure. So hopefully if anybody pulls them, they're not gonna come off. But yeah, those are my bumblebees. What do you guys think? I really like them. Uh, and more more than that, because they are, they are adorable in my mind. I really, really like them, but I'm really proud of myself too for being able to just kind of trust myself and work through the process of making something um, that's in my brain. Like, yes, I knew a little bit going in through kind of basic crochet toy build up. Um, I I'm lucky enough that I was able to see a bunch of pictures of different types of bees. And I was definitely very lucky that I learned about the invisible stitch. So this is not, this is just a normal stitch. This is invisible. Like look how clean. So I was very lucky that that kind of fell into my lap when it did and that I have an eyeball tutorial um, that I love so much. So a lot of things are in place and a lot of things helped me out to get to this point, but I'm super proud of these little guys. I really can't wait to cast on the small ones, hopefully soon. Um, but thank you for watching my bee adventure.